All right, where'd your name come from? My name come from the streets. It come from the streets and part of my family. You know, being a man of my family, um, the only boy out of, you know, five sisters, you know, so being a man of my family, you know, taking care of my mom, making sure everything is great, you know, after my father passed and just, you know, being a man of my family. Has that always been your rap name or have you had other names in the past? No, uh, actually, that always been my rap name, Made Man, because it's just like, I'm self-made. And I've always been self-made, so that's just what it is. Now, where are you from? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Where in Atlanta? Uh, zone 3, you know, is really basically where I got all my money from and where I kind of just, like, went through all my struggles and went through this and went through that, you know. But um, I was raised on the east side, you know, Boulder, Chris, you know, Zone 6. What's your opinion of the state of rap music right now in Atlanta? Um, it's through the roof, man. Like, I mean, if you notice, like, everything is coming out of Atlanta, you know, most of everything, and you know? it's like, you know, we kind of like breed stars, you know, so I guess I'm like the next one to blow. Now, what was it like for you growing up in the city of Atlanta? Paint the picture for us. Growing up in Atlanta, it was, man, it was, you know, I mean, it was rough, you know, I mean, it was rough, and it was also not too bad, you know, because Atlanta is like a, a place where a lot of out-of-towners can come and just kind of, like, set up and get money and, you know, like, you know, do their thing. So, you know, Atlanta, like, growing up was just basically about people, like, hustling, you know, getting their own money, you know, doing their thing. What was one of your roughest moments growing up? One of my roughest moments was really being in the streets, like being locked up every other week, you know, uh, the red dogs jumping out, the black band coming through, you know, just, you know, just going through the obstacles of like learning, you know, these streets basically because the streets will eat you up if you ain't really just focus on, you know, what's really needs to be focused on. And, and that's making it out the streets. See, a lot of folks have it twisted. They think being in the streets is the main thing. No, getting out the streets is the thing. So, you know. Growing up, what type of student were you in school? Growing up, I was, um, I would say I was like a BC student, you know, BC. I stayed really mad, like school, me in school, we kind of clashed a lot, you know, like, I, you know, I used to fight a lot and just go through a lot with, uh, you know, just to fight, you know, like basically, because, you know, I had five sisters, so I always, you know, I always was throwing hands and fighting on me, I went when like the average. You were the aggressor or you were defending yourself? No, I was an aggressor. Yeah, I was an aggressor. More like a bully? No, not more so of like a bully, but more so of a guy like, you know, who handled his business if you come his way. You know. Graduated high school? No, I didn't graduate. What year did you? Well, I had, I supposed to uh, graduate in 2003. Which is, okay. Yeah, you know, I supposed to graduate in 2003. And what happened? Well, basically, you know, 10th uh, grade, I dropped out, you know. Um, you know, I had bought my first car at 16 years old, you know. I paid a thousand dollars for it. You know, uh, it was a red money car, though, 1976, you know. You know what I'm saying? Motor rocket in it, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I kind of growed up a little fast, and it was like, you know, school was just, me and school was just kind of clashing. And, you know, like I said, it had kind of kicked me out a couple of times. And so that's where I had just kind of made up my mind that I was... Just gonna do my own thing. Now, okay, looking back at your situation, mm -hmm. if you could have finished school, would you have? Would that have been the right move instead of dropping out at the yeah, 10th grade? Yeah, definitely, definitely. If I could go back and change it, I would, you know, as far as the school situation. But I didn't really let that hinder me because, you know, um, like five or six years after I dropped out, I still ended up going to get my GED. And then I still end up enrolling into a technical college, taking some business courses. So, you know, I, you know, I made a turnaround and I, you know, so I don't really take back nothing, though, really, to be honest, because what I went through made me who I am today. So no regrets. No, I no regrets. Now, you, you did a few college classes. Is that more like a trade school type of situation, or was that like a college college? No, it was like, it was like a technical college. Actually, it was Atlanta Technical College right there on Metropolitan, you know. And you dropped out of that also? 
Well, I ain't gonna say I dropped out of that. I just kind of like, you know, as the semester stopped, um, you know, I did like two semesters and then like I didn't enroll back because I was taking business management and, you know, I was going to um, school, you know, passing tests, you know, doing my homework and I actually picked up a lot of knowledge from it. And, you know, at the end of the day, I kind of figured like, I need money to start my business, you know what I'm saying? So if I'm just in a classroom all day, you know, I'm still not having the funds to start my business. So I kind of soaked up the knowledge that I needed and I used that to move forward with my life. Now, what do you say to somebody coming out of high school, looking at this interview, hearing your story, and trying to make the best next decision in their life? Some people say, let me go over some options. Some people say you need college. Some people say you don't need college. Some people say a trade school's cool. Some people drop out of college and end up being successful anyways, like Bill Gates, for example. Mm -hmm. Some people go to college, graduate, and end up taking a different career path anyways and don't get a job in the degree they got a degree in. So what do you say to somebody looking at your story, trying to make a decision out of high school for the next step? Well, basically, I would say do what fits you best. You know, follow your heart, follow your debt, really, basically. And, um, you know, everybody has a dream. Everything starts with a dream. So, basically, whatever your dream is, you have to follow it. And, I mean, school may be for you or it may not be for you. It all depends on your dream, you know. So, I would say whatever fits you best, you know, follow your heart, you know, follow your mind. And, you know, actually, you know, don't be a leader or do what everybody else is doing, you know. Do what fits you because out here in this world, it's not about the money you make, it's about the passion you have for what you're doing. What about somebody that wants to do music like you? Do you advise them to go to college and do the school thing anyways, or go straight to the music after high school? Well, no, I say, I mean, if you have an opportunity to go to college, yes, because you always need a backup plan. You know, this music game is not, like, guaranteed. You know, there's so many, it's, it's a million people trying to rap, so it's like, it's not like something that's just, like, happens overnight so you always got to have a backup plan you know out here in this world if you want to succeed anyway jobs you had growing up if any man i'd have had several jobs like i could name you know what i'm saying uh wing stops hardy's wendy's man home depot i used to actually paint with my dad you know my dad he did home improvement so i was raised into that field so i was you know eight nine years old painting you know hammering stuff, you know what I'm saying? But uh, your yeah, home improvement, um, man, you name it, man. Washing cars, washing big big 18-wheelers, man. It's all type of jobs, man, you know, because you gotta work, you know? It ain't all about the street shit, it's about working. Why so many different jobs, though? Well, because, you know, you have to find yourself, you know what I mean? You know, you might get a job and, you know, you might work there and you might find another job that pays more money, see me? My whole term was not just having a job. My term was being able to buy things from having a job, do things from having a job. Like, not just saying, okay, I'm just going to work and just working and then just getting a paycheck, living paycheck to paycheck. I ain't like how I'm trying to live. So, of course, I had to make steps, 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 steps until I got to where I'm at now. Did you quit these jobs, get fired from these jobs? Um, most of my jobs I quit. Most of my jobs, I quit, you know. You know, most of, you know, I just stopped going. You know, you wake up one day and just be like, hey, man, I got a whole nother opportunity. I got a whole nother route. And it's like, you know, I was, you know, like, you know, growing up, I always felt like, you know, when I was, you know, um, between 16 and, like, 21, you know, I always figured, like, 500 a week would be good money. You know, like, that's good money. But, you know, as you get older, man, it's like 500 a week, now. I ain't no money, you know. Now you can make 500 in a day. And, any crazy stories dealing with any of these jobs? Anything out of the norm? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a real crazy story, man. I was like, um, I would say I was about 15. I was working at WK Wings on Boulder, Chris. And actually I was working the late night shift. And, um, you know, my manager and an employee, you know, you know, they was in there just playing and talking, and then, you know, he had whipped out a gun and was showing them a gun. And they're like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And he ended up actually shooting the guy in the chest on the job, you know, like right there in front of everybody. And like, not purposely, but he was just playing like, hey, look. And then 
when I was shot the guy in the chest, I was like, whoa, you know, I was right there counting chicken. Cause that's what I used to do at WK Weed. They had me counting chicken. You know, was you know. he okay? Yeah, he was okay. He was okay. He didn't die now. He didn't die now. Now, in regards to your parents, you mentioned your father passed away. How old were you when he passed away? Well, actually, he passed away like two years ago. You know, so really, you know, my father, he was really in my life. Okay. All my life, really. Were your parents together or separated? They were together. Which you don't see at all these yeah. days. Yeah. Exactly. You're pretty much one of the last from the old school to, I mean, I, I've done a lot of interviews with a lot of people, mm -hmm. and maybe 5%, 10%, <laughs> maybe, yeah. you know, yeah. of about your age range would say their parents are still together. Yeah. Yeah. You don't see that. Yeah, it was a blessing, man. A lot of broken yeah. homes. Yeah, it was. Especially like growing up in the 80s, you know, when there was so much distractions and you know the crack era and I was you know it was crazy so yeah it was a blessing man you know I grew up with my dad so a lot of these guys you know so they look up to you know older guys or you know guys in the streets you know as they OGs and all that but nah my dad was my OG he taught me all my game it was a blessing what did he pass away from if you don't mind me asking yeah he passed away from pancreatic cancer did they catch it late yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like when they caught it, he was kind of like at his second stage. And so, you know, like, you know, after all the procedures, you know, like, for anybody who does have it or gets it, I would say, I mean, you know, you could try to do those procedures, but it's just like every procedure, like, it got worse and worse. And so, you know. Is there any way they could have caught it early? Is there, mm. is there anything he could have done? Could he have gone to the doctor more? Could he have... Yeah. Well, I mean, I would say... Or is know, that just one of those cancers where it's just hard to... Well, I mean, it is hard to tell you. It is one of those, like, the worst ones because it's, like, deal with your intestines and your, like, you know, lower stomach. So it's, like, it is a hard one to catch, but it's, like, um, you know, most, you know, black men, you know, um, you know, not how we are. We don't really go to the doctor as much as we should and get checkups, you know what I'm saying? So I'm pretty sure that, like... If he would have been like checking up on it, he probably would have called it. But you know, God has a plan, and you know, I mean, everything is in God's hands, so I don't really question it, you know. Now, you mentioned five sisters. Mm -hmm. um, was that hard to deal with growing up? Five women? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It was. I ain't going to tell you no lie. No brothers? No brothers. And, and being the youngest. You know what I'm saying? It was, you know, it was, it was wild. It's like, five different personalities, you know, all in one house. Then, you know, you got your mama, so that's really like six personalities. You know what I'm saying? So me personally, like, my dad, he was my outlet, you know what I'm saying, in sports, you know what I'm saying? He kept me in sports and this and that. But then, like, once I got older, it's like having five sisters, you know, they got baby daddies, and, you know, they baby daddies was, you know, in the streets and getting money and, you know what I'm saying, jewelry and, you know, riding convertibles and, you know, so it had a lot of influence, you know, I would say. Anybody else in your family raps aside from yourself? Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, I got nephews that rap, you know, my son rap. You know, I'm kind of like an influence on my family, man. So everybody kind of like, you know, whoever feel like they got it, man, they're trying to go at it, you know. Have you collabed with anybody else in your family? Yeah, actually, you know, my nephews, we done made little songs. Yo, we got little songs we done made. What does your family think about your rap career? Man, they love it, man. They support me to the fullest, man, because they're seeing the whole progress of who I am and what I've been through and where I'm at now. And it's just like, wow, it's just great, you know. Have they seen you perform? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Seen me perform a couple times. In regards to your parents, what's the worst thing you put them through? The worst thing I would put them through, I would say, is... Man, the streets, you know, the streets and, you know, going to jail so many times as I did and, you know, like, you know, things like that. Because, you know, I remember, like, the first time I did get arrested and actually locked up, you know, and then, you know, they changed me out. You know, I got on orange and all this and all that. And then, you know, I had spent the night in there or whatever. When I actually I was in there like three, four days. And, um, you know, my mom and them, they came and seen me. And then, you know, just seeing them, seeing me in them, you know what I'm saying, in that orange and behind that cage like that, man, it's just, that's a fucked up feeling for me, you know what I'm saying? But, um... What were you getting arrested for? 
Well, um, I had got arrested for um, possession of marijuana, you know, trying to get some money, man, you know, the fast way, you know, the wrong way, the fast way, however. Ever end up having to do prison time or no? No, no prison time. I've never been to prison. I kind of, you know, I've been in and out of jail, you know, as long as I've been there, what, a week, you know. I ain't never really just sat in there like that, you know. We talked about a variety of subjects regarding your upbringing, but what's your... Overall speaking, what's your general message to the youth? My general message is to stay out of trouble, you know, stay on the right track, stay focused, stay doing the right thing, you know, don't be a follower, you know, be a leader, you know, make great decisions, you know, work hard, dream big, and, you know, just take it to the next level and whatever you're doing, be great, grind on. How did you get into rap music? What age were you? Man, I would say, um, man, I would say, I was about, um, shit, like 20, 20, like 22, 22, I'd say 22. You know, I really late? wish I would have stayed like. You said 22 years old? You got, that's kind of late to get into rap music, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What were you listening to before? What was I listening to? Yeah, what type of music? Man, I was listening to, um, shit, man, Master P, you know, like, you know, I grew up in the era where it was Master P, Hot Boys, you know, like all that type of shit, Tupac, you know what I mean? He was one of my greats, you know what I'm saying? Um, shit like that, like the old era. So, okay, 22 years old, you started rapping yourself, or that's when you actually started listening to rap music? Oh, no, I've been listening to rap music ever since I was a little boy. Okay. You know, it's like, you know, music is in my blood, I would say, you know, just from, you know, growing up, you know, your parents, you know, they playing music, this, this, and that, and the third. You know, my, uh, actually, and the funniest thing about it is my parents' favorite rapper was Tupac, so, you know, I grew up listening to Tupac, you know what I'm saying, you know? I was, you know, so, yeah, so I had been listening to rap for a long time. I just figured that I wanted to do it myself. And at 22, that's when you actually got into it f for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Now, any musical influences? Anybody that inspired you? Yeah, one, you know, Master P. He won, you know, because he came in the game so hard and he hit them folks so heavy. And, you know, he made five, six hundred million out of it. You know, he put so many people on, so many people in position. Yeah, so Master P, he would be one of my... One, you know, person who I can look up to, you know, keep it real, keep it real with his team, you know what I'm saying? Ain't really no salty things you done heard about him, you know what I'm saying? Have you ever had a chance to meet him yet? No, I ain't met him yet. I ain't met him. Now, how many years would you say you've been perfecting your craft for? Mm, I would say at least like the last two, last two years I've just been really perfecting it because I had a lot of things that uh, distracted me, so, you know. I would say the last two years, I've been taking things really serious, just kind of like crossing my teeth, down my eyes, putting everything together. Do you remember your first rap or what you were rapping about back then? Uh, I don't remember my first rap, but it had to be some street shit, you know, like, you know, basically what I've been through, some shit I've been through, you know. A lot of these rappers, they just be talking about shit they ain't been through, or talking about somebody else's life, or, you know, this, that, and third, but, you know, Everything I really rap about shit I didn't really been through and kind of seen and made it through, you know. So, yeah. What bothers you? Okay, let me ask you this. When it comes to the music industry, mm -hmm. what bothers you the most about it at this point? What's your biggest pet peeve with it, if anything? Man, it's watered down, man. It's, I mean, it's watered down. Like, you know, it's just... But, I mean, hip-hop has changed so much, you know, like, it's just did a whole 360 change, you know I mean? I don't knock it because, you know, like, you know, everything has to change and evolve to something different, you know, but um, I would say it's very different from what it used to be, you know, but um, I guess that's life, you know. Who do you blame for that? Do you blame the record labels and the executives and that side of the industry, or do you blame the listeners and consumers and that side of the industry? Well, no, you can't never blame the listeners or the consumers because you can't knock what somebody like. You know, I, I mean, you know, everybody have a different ear to what they like. So, no, you can't knock that. I guess, um, I mean, you really can't knock nobody, man. You know what I'm saying? Because 
when people make music, you know, they're passionate to their music and they make it to how they feel. And so that's what makes music special because listeners, they gravitate to how you feel and then they like it. So, I mean, I can't really knock it because, you know, to each is their own, you know. Each person got their own little style. Each person making, you know what I'm saying, millions off of us. I can't knock what, you know, what go but. Yeah, but in the in regards to the watered down effect that you speak of, is there anything that can be fixed to this type of problem? Is there a solution to it, or? Yeah, I guess you know more on the lyrics. I guess you know, like take it back to the to the lyrics. You know. Now let's talk about the studio. Mm -hmm. When you're in the studio, top three necessities, top three things you need in the studio. Top three things I need, man. First, I need some good trees, you know, to be able to just meditate myself and be able to just flow, you know. Um, second, you know, of course I got to have my engineer, Brian, who I always fuck with, you know, he um, basically know my sound, so, you know, he's like a necessity that I need there. And, um, you know, just basically just, you know what I mean, good people around, a good vibe. What uh, type of marijuana strain do you go for? I go for the... Actually, I've been smoking on that Louis the 13. It's from my boy out there in Cali, man. He, you know, Louis. He got them things pre-rolled uh, with the glass tip, man. It's just like, you know what I mean? Just really out of the next level. You know, Snoop Dogg, you know, him and Snoop Dogg done collab. up. So, you know, they got something going on. And, yeah, so I would say Louis 13. That's what I've been blowing, you know. And I like gelato, too. Now, what does smoking do for you in the studio? It calms me down, you know, it helps me to just, you know, it helps me to just, just, you know, just, you know, be real mellow and, you know what I'm saying, come up with them good melodies, you know what I'm saying, be real melodic, you know what I mean. Craziest studio story, if you have one. Craziest studio story. Mmm. Craziest studio story I would have, I would say. I ain't really got too many, man, I ain't, you know. I ain't really got too many crazy, like, studio stories, I can't really tell you. Now, I'm sure you come across a variety of beats. Has there been any beat that you received that you passed on that became a bigger song for somebody else? No. Not yet? No, not yet, not yet, not yet. What's the realest song you ever wrote so far in your whole catalog of music? The realest song? Mm-hmm. I would say, Stay On Your Shit. What's that about? It's basically about, you know, um, you know, staying on top of what you got going on, you know, progressing out here in this world, progressing in life. Um, you know, just stay on your shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it's kind of like self-explanatory, you know, you staying on top of what you got going on and you're making it work. Risk versus reward. What's the biggest risk you took for your music career so far? On uh, the streets. <laughs> shit. That's how I mean, I can sum it up like that. The streets, man, you know. But, you know, it's like, that's my past now, so it's like, you know what I'm saying? You gotta take the risk to get the reward. You know, the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward, you know. Proudest accomplishment so far in your music career? Proudest accomplishment, um, hmm, I guess I would say like, um, cause see, basically I had went on retirement for a minute and I wasn't rapping, so I had dropped my first song back and you know, um, it did like, three or four or five thousand uh, views on SoundCloud, like, you know, within like a month. But then I dropped my next one and it did like five thousand in like five days. So it just kind of like, that was an accomplishment to show that like, okay, you know, they still, they still listening. Like, you know, I still got their eyes and, and their attention. Why'd you retire? Well, basically, man, you know, um, going through a lot in my life, you know what I'm saying? And then not, like one number one, thing was the money, you know, because I never really had a co-sign or uh, somebody who was behind me or somebody sponsoring me or, you know, I always been independent, I always made my own money, so it's like, when my money got short, <laughs> it's, it's time for me to goddamn recuperate, you know what I'm saying? So basically that's what I did, you know, I had kind of recuperated and, um, you know, it was crazy because, you know, I was driving like a 07 Grand Prix at the time. Right, well, you know, this was really like about three years ago, two, three years ago. I was driving like a Grand Prix 2007 and I ended up getting a title loan on it, you know, and they gave me like 3500 And basically I put that down on a dump truck because my partner Jason, 
Mr. Two Weeks Out, he's a super trainer, you know. But um, he the one turned me on to the dump truck game and basically told me all the ins and outs about it. And, you know, told me how they're making $75 an hour, this, that, and the third. So me, I'm all about money and all about making um, new opportunities. So I took my title on and put it down on my dump truck and just went, just went from there. And then I got one dump truck, and then I let one dump truck pay for another dump truck. And shit, man, the rest is history. Dump truck business is good? Dump truck business is great. <laughs> Dump truck business is straight, man, for real. So, yeah, that's where, you know, yeah, that's where I'm at with it now, man. It's like, you know, so, you know, I retired to get myself straight, to get my business straight, you know, to set my foundation up because, like I mentioned before, you know, this rap and this music is not the main thing. You got to have something else going. So that's my, um outlet, you know, that's where my money come in, my major money come in, in. but, um, yeah. Why'd you come back? Well, I came back because the game was missing me, man. <laughs> the game needed me, man. It, you know, like I said, it's watered down, man, and it takes some realness, you know what I mean? Somebody who done really did this shit, somebody who done really lived this shit, somebody who can really, like, bring this shit to the, to the world of the listeners, man. What's the biggest misconception of you? The biggest misconception is... Probably, you know, um, the biggest misconception is, I would say, man, um... What's one thing people think about you but it's not true? Um, well, you know, I guess, you know, girls, they might think I'm a real big player and, like, I got a lot of holes and I fuck on my holes and all that old shit, but, you know, I really ain't, you know what I mean? I'm focused on what I'm, you know, the bigger picture, man. You know, it's a bigger picture in my eyes. Craziest rumor you heard about yourself? Craziest rumor I heard about myself. I died or I got shot or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, some crazy shit. Folks had, you know, text me like, you know, how did you get shot? You know, just like some stupid shit. Like, what? Not true. Not true. Here I am, live and direct in your face. Do you care what people think of you? No, hell no. Nah. You can never care what people think because you'll never get to where you want to be at, man. You know, that's how, you know, like, come on, man. People got opinions all day. That shit don't mean nothing. It's like, it's nothing. I don't care what nobody say about me, man. My skin is tough. You know what I mean? Tough skin, man. So, you know. What are your keys to success? My keys to success is determination, man. You know, you got to be determined, you know. Like, and, um... You gotta have a dream. That's a key to success. And not only having a dream, but working towards your dream. Um, another key to success is just staying active every day, working towards your bigger goal, every day doing something, every day moving forward, every day taking positive steps. You know, not taking backward steps, you know. And, you know, basically, because like they say, a new mistake is always better than an old mistake. So those are my keys to success. And, you know, just basically grind on. That's my main key to success, grind on.